Hello and welcome to the beautiful Pacific Northwest where today we finally have a bit of sunshine and I'm going to be testing out these guys, their Echo Flow 220 watt bifacial solar panel. How close to that 220 watts can we actually get? How easy are they to work with? Well, stick around and let's find out. So it's time to upgrade my portable solar panels and the ones I've chosen are the Echo Flow 220 watt bifacial panels. Now I use these for camping when we are out in our RV and obviously off grid. I typically use one of these as a backup solution. This is an Echo Flow Delta Max. It has a capacity of two kilowatt hours and this guy has enough power handling capacity to be able to plug in the RV. I can obviously power my entire RV off it as well as recharge my house battery. Now when it comes to replenishing this, of course, anytime I'm plugged into shore power, I make sure and charge this guy up. But when we are off grid, I am using portable solar panels in order to keep it topped up. Now, up until now, I've been using these guys. These are fairly inexpensive panels that I got off Amazon. They are rated at 120 watts, although typically under optimum conditions, the best I've ever gotten out of them is around about 70 to 80 watts. Now, I use two of them together, so typically I'm getting around about 150 watts maximum, again, under optimum conditions. So that's gonna take me about 13, 14 hours to charge this guy up from empty using these panels. And so I decided it's time to invest with something with a little more power. So now I've upgraded to the Echo Flow 220 watt bifacial panel. I have two of them just as I did with the old panels. And if I combine them and I'm able to get somewhere around about 400 watts, then I should be able to get this thing recharged within a single day of good sunshine. Okay, so in the box is the panel itself, of course, in its carrying case. It also comes with these carabiners for hooking up the stand. We'll see that in action in just a moment. And of course, the cable for plugging into your Echo Flow or other solar generator. Okay, let's unpack this panel and set it up. Now the case also transforms into the kickstand for this when you want it up at an angle. So we'll look at that in just a moment. And there you have it. There is our full panel. As you can see, it's a little bit stiff. I guess after a while it will straighten itself out. And let's lay it down. And let's plug it in. And see what we get. So right now it's around about two o'clock in the afternoon. The sun is getting a little bit deeper in the sky and I have it laying flat as you can see on the ground. And I'll share this with you so you can see right now I'm getting a, almost 200 watts of charging out of it in this configuration. So let's see if we can use the kickstand and see if we can optimize this a little bit. Now using the kickstand involves hooking these four carabiners to the four loop holes on here and also connecting it to the case. So let's see how that works. And as you can see, we are now getting around 230 watts of charging by just simply adjusting the angle to be a little bit more pointing towards the sun. 
Now the fact that this panel is only rated at 220 watts, this is pretty impressive. Particularly when you look in the manual, you'll see that EchoFlow advises that you're probably not going to get the full 220 watts out of it. Now the fact that we're able to get so much power out of this particular panel is of course due to this. So in addition to having 220 watt solar panel on the front of the panel, there is an additional, I believe it's 150 watts worth of solar panel on the back, which picks up the light reflecting off the ground behind it. Okay, so as you can see right now, we are getting around about 220 watts of charging out of our panel. There's a couple of small clouds going over. Let's see what happens when we put two of these in series. And the way we do that is by simply plugging them in to each other. And with the clouds momentarily out of the way, you can see that we're charging at over 400 watts with the two panels connected in series. Now, one of the reasons I like to use portable solar panels instead of just relying on the rooftop panels on my RV is that typically when we are camping, we like to find a nice shady spot so we are not in the direct sunlight. And as the sun moves throughout the day, you really don't have the ability to optimize the position of your panel. So you're not always going to get optimum conditions. So by having portable solar panels, of course, I can place them in a position where they're gonna get optimum conditions. And I can also move them around throughout the day in order to continue to do that. But there's one limitation here, and that is the length of my cable. Now this is the standard cable that comes with the panel and it would allow me to get these probably around about 10 feet at most away from my solar generator. So if I want to get further away, I'm going to have to introduce additional cable. But as you increase the length of the cable, you're going to diminish the actual charging power. So let's see what happens then if I introduce an additional 10 feet of cable and to see how that influences my charging performance. Okay, so I have both panels hooked up in series. As you can see, we are charging at around about 430 watts now. So let's see what happens when I introduce 10 feet of additional cable into the line. And as you can see, we are back up to around about 420 watts. So maybe a slightly down on what it was before, but pretty decent overall. So let's see what happens if I now introduce an additional 10 feet of cable. So now I have 20 feet of extension cable in line. And as you can see, the wattage has dropped down to just over 400 watts. So we do see a small drop for each 10 feet of cabling that we introduce, but of course, Getting further away might make the difference between me getting the panel into a nice sunny spot or not. So the sacrifice isn't too bad for being able to put the panel in optimum conditions. Okay, so let's see how the panel performs when the conditions are not so good. So as you can hopefully see behind me, if I move over here, you can see that it is pretty overcast today. There are a lot of clouds, pretty much 100% cloud cover. The sun occasionally shines a little bit through the clouds and I'm actually feeling the occasional spot of rain here. I have a single panel set up and I'm pointed at pretty much where the sun would normally be. And as you can see right now, we're getting just less than 40 watts. It's been bouncing up and down between 40 and 60. And that is just with a single panel in these completely overcast conditions. So obviously if I were to have both panels connected, I'd be seeing somewhere in the 80 to 100 watt range, which is still pretty reasonable amount of charge when the conditions are like this. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the overall design and the practicality here. So basically the 
case, as you can see, turns into a kickstand. You can actually adjust the angle simply by pulling it up and then you can zip up either side of the kickstand in order to have it stay there. Overall, it's not a bad design. You can see the carabiners are connected here either side and also down here at the bottom. Um, what I don't like about it so much is the fact that this is the case and it's made out of like a fabric means that when you put it on the ground, it's likely to get pretty messed up. Also, if you are out and this gets rained on, now the panel itself is completely waterproof, but of course, again, in uh, wet conditions, particularly when you're out camping somewhere, this could get pretty messed up. It's not a bad design. It does work pretty well. Um, actually better than I initially thought it was going to work, but I might try to find some alternative way of creating a kickstand for these panels to help uh, keep the case in better condition over the long term. Over the past few years, I have tested a number of different solar panels, and I can honestly say that this is the very first time that I have tested a panel and been able to get the actual stated charging wattage out of it. And as you saw, in some cases, we were even able to exceed that power. I also like the fact that it provides a usable charging power even when conditions are not so great. The other thing I have noticed that I plan to follow up on is it seems a lot more forgiving when it comes to pointing it directly at the sun. With my old panels, I found that I was constantly going out and realigning them to, in order to get a good charging wattage. With the bifacial panel, it seems to be a lot more forgiving, so hopefully I won't have to be realigning them constantly as I did with my old panels. As far as the design is concerned, the panel itself is very well made, looks like it should be pretty durable over time. I'm not a huge fan of the case slash kickstand. I would have preferred that they put some kind of mechanism onto the panel itself, but I think it's something I can live with. And as I said earlier, I'll probably try to find some kind of solution so I don't have to use the case as the kickstand. But overall, very impressed and I now have a setup which should be able to easily handle my daily battery usage. So that covers it for today. I hope you got good information out of today's video. If you have any comments, any questions, if you want to share your experience, please go ahead and place those into the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give us a like and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.